So in this video, I wanna talk about shame and guilt. I got a recent request in my last video to talk about shame and guilt and how we get over it, how we process it. And honestly, shame and guilt is probably one of the most painful emotions you can process, but also one of the most rewarding. What do I mean by that? Well, as you learn to go through your shame and guilt, you actually get huge changes in your external reality. As you let go of more shame, which is self-hate, I hate myself. And as you let go of guilt, which is I've done something wrong, uh, you actually end up creating huge gains in the way the outside world looks to you, the way you relate to the outside world. And, and it almost seems almost magical because you let go more and more of that, the world does seem to treat you differently. Now, this is a huge, huge area for nice guys. Uh, a lot of nice guys have what they call toxic shame. Uh, a lot of guys that are trying to get good with approaching women and feel guilty or ashamed all the time. Uh, this is the main thing that's holding them back. And they think that if they get women in their lives, pull women into their lives, uh, that they'll process the emotion. The more they get women, uh, the more they feel validated. They feel like they did something great and it, it validates that their, their shame. They don't feel as bad anymore. But the moment a woman rejects them or pulls away, the more pain they go into because it activates the shame, it activates the guilt. So we're gonna go deeper into that today, try to understand the nuances of shame and guilt and how you come out of it. And this is a huge area for me because I am a recovering nice guy, had massive toxic shame, tons of guilt, and it really controlled my whole life. So make sure you stay tuned to find out if this is a serious issue in your life too. Now, before we get fully started, I wanna invite you to uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and uh, make sure to comment in the video. Those comments are really important. Also, make sure to share the video. If you're getting a lot of value out of these videos, definitely make sure to share so we can continue to reach more people and help them too. Now, let's dive in a little bit deeper. As I said earlier, as a guy that's recovering from shame, that shame is self-hate. And there's two types of nice guys that have shame. There's the type that know they have it, they hate themselves and are hiding it from the world and they're trying to get validated by the world to get rid of it. And the type that deny it to even themselves. They have it, but they even deny to themselves they have it and they're constantly repressing it and there's a fight to hold it down as they try to go out into the outside world and prove they're good enough. You can have guilt without shame, but you can't have shame without guilt. Do you get that? You can have guilt without shame because as a as a healthy individual who doesn't have any shame, if you feel guilty about something, you go apologize for it. You go take care of it. You go deal with it. You know, I did something wrong. I can own it because you don't have shame affecting you and you clean it up. But you can't have guilt. Uh, you can't have shame without guilt because the nature of shame, the self-hate, is going to create tons and tons of guilt where there shouldn't be. You're going to feel guilty for things that that you shouldn't be feeling guilty for that that are kind of ridiculous what's a good example of this well if you're walking down the street and you want to cross the street and you start looking around because you're illegally crossing the street you're jaywalking and you don't and you're more concerned about what people think of you getting caught by a cop getting a ticket than you are your own safety but if you're looking around out of love for yourself to keep your body safe and to be safe that's a different answer that's not there's no guilt there's no shame in that right um, if you're driving down the street and you see a cop and you immediately straighten up, check your speed and you get a little worried, that is guilt, for example. And that guilt is being most likely created by some form of shame, the sense that I am bad. OK, now, if you actually don't feel bad about yourself and you see a cop, you probably might appreciate the cop for being out there protecting you, protecting the world. And you won't worry. You'll, you'll assume cops are doing good things in the world and you won't be totally worried about what the cop thinks. So you might even wave to the cop. You might thank the cop for his service. You see the difference. Oh, it's another good example. Another good example is being in line. And let's say you're at the restaurant and you're in line to get some food. And it's, a, it's like a, one of those, those restaurants where you go, you're in line and you order, and then you bump into somebody next to you. Do you apologize because you feel guilty inside? Or do you apologize out of love? You know, for example, I love my fellow human. I appreciate my fellow human. I have gratitude for my fellow humans. Hey, man, sorry about that. Or, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's a little reactive nature. That's an indicator that that's, that's guilt coming up. Now, what you're going to notice is when you have shame, you're going to have all pervasive guilt. You're not going to have guilt coming up once in a while. All pervasive guilt is the examples I just gave. 
walking down the street and worrying about what people think of you. Am I dressed nice enough? Oh, oh, my, my clothes don't look good enough. I have to go home and change. Or uh, maybe I misbuttoned my shirt today and I look stupid and then I begin to feel guilty and stupid because I did that rather than laughing at myself and thinking it's funny. You're going to start to notice if you pay attention that little reactive nature is an indicator of the guilt and possibly the shame. And it's going to be happening everywhere. It's going to be happening all over the place. See, guilt to me for nice guys is almost like a fish in water. It's running everywhere in the background. We get so used to it. We get so used to being reactive to the nature around us that we uh, we stop seeing it after a while. We lose track of it and it just becomes part of our background noise. And then it starts to become anxiety from there. A little bit of nervousness and fear that something's going to go wrong, that somebody's going to judge you, somebody's going to say something bad about you. How does this relate to dating women, business, or uh, becoming more successful in anything in life. Well, it's huge in, in a sense. Well, how it relates is, for example, uh, if I'm gonna go out and approach a beautiful woman and I don't like myself, I have shame, and then I feel guilty for being, and then I go approach a beautiful woman, I'm gonna feel like I'm in an imposition. I'm taking advantage, I'm doing something wrong, I'm doing something bad because I'm trying to get validation from her to compensate for my shame and guilt, which is what a lot of guys are trying to do. Um, same thing in business. If I'm trying to make a sale and I don't like myself, that can be a real problem. That can be a serious problem. And uh, we need to take a deeper look at that because in reality, if you didn't have any shame, you didn't hate yourself, you didn't have any guilt, you wouldn't feel bad when somebody says no. You wouldn't feel bad when a woman rejects you. You wouldn't be, feel bad when you're turned down for a sale. You'd just be like, oh, that's not the right woman. That's not the right product. Matter of fact, you could laugh about it. If you get rejected in a really good way, you just laugh. You think it's funny. It's a learning experience. It's a growing experience. But if you're constantly beating yourself up for not getting it right, for not doing it right, that's an indicator usually of shame and guilt. Just notice the nature of the difference of the words you're using to beat yourself up. I'm a bad person. I'm no good. Or I did something bad. I did something wrong. And that's an indicator of one or the other. They kind of, the guilt will trigger the shame if there's shame under the guilt. So start to pay attention. This is the real key. It's all going to start most likely with guilt. You're going to see guilt a lot and start to pay attention everywhere you go. When you bump into somebody, do you feel bad or do you just apologize because you care about them? That's the perfect example. When you make a mistake, do you feel bad or do you open your mind and learn from it and say, wow, I made a mistake. Teach me more. Or do you apologize to the person for making a mistake in my workshops and seminars? I often had students, I would be teaching them the very thing they want to learn and they would keep stopping to apologize for not getting it right. And there's no apology needed. You're just learning. Why would you apologize for learning something new? Or they would explain why they don't understand because they want me to understand uh, because on some level they're feeling guilty or ashamed uh, that they didn't understand the concept. And I'm like, well, you're here because you don't understand the concept. It's okay. All I want you to do is open up and learn. And it makes it harder to teach, change, and grow when this is getting in between you and the information you need to learn. If you're constantly feeling guilty or ashamed because you don't know it, because you didn't get it right, and you're trying to prove to everybody you're good enough, it really interferes with learning, with growth, with processing. Think about this with approaching women. As you approach beautiful women, if every time you approach, you feel guilty, you feel ashamed, it makes it really hard to take in new information because you spend a lot of time defending against that shame and guilt. So kind of let this in, walk around today and over the next week and start practicing, noticing where you get a little reactive, a little like, oh, I got to explain why I did that. I feel really bad that I did that. That was wrong of me to do that. I got to apologize out of a hint of fear and nervousness because guilt engenders fear. So you got shame engenders guilt, guilt engenders fear because guilt implies you need the need for punishment or because you did something wrong. So start to notice where that trigger is going off. If you really pay attention, you've got a lot of nice guy syndrome and every nice guy is going to have shame and guilt. Then you're going to start to notice that it's going off everywhere. Every time you step into hear this, every time you step into tension, it's going to trigger more shame and guilt. That's why nice guys want to get out of tension. Every time you step into tension, it's going to trigger shame and guilt. That's why nice guys want to get out of tension because tension triggers the very thing they don't want to feel. Do you get that? 
Now, if you don't have a shame problem, the guilt will be easy to resolve. You face it, you call it out, you own it, and it starts to heal. And I highly encourage you to do that. But if you've got the shame problem, you gotta go all the way down to the root ultimately. As you feel the guilt and start to release it, you'll start to also feel the shame. I'm not good enough, I'm gonna fail, what's the point, I'm a loser. Then you wanna welcome that energy. And beneath the guilt is gonna be abandonment ultimately. This sense of being shut off, uh, uh, being closed out. Like when you were young, let me explain that. When you were young, parents typically parented by shutting off their heart in a shame-based child and they would they would punish and like my, my mom would do get mad at you yell at you and then shut off their heart for a day or two and to a two-year-old three-year-old four-year-old five-year-old this feels horrible this feels like the end of the world and so we want to get past that we want to learn how to reparent ourselves and we have to do this by opening our hearts in the middle of that pain. So when you identify someplace you felt shame, learn to just welcome the, the pain for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you can handle. Open your heart as much as you can. Feel that heart open. There'll be a, a, a feeling right here and you might feel sadness or loneliness for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You can do this with the shame. You can do this with the guilt. You can do this with the fear and then let it go. Let it go and focus on something beautiful that naturally opens your heart. A memory of a sunset, a beautiful song. Sometimes I listen to certain music and I'll go back and forth between the memory or the thing that's in front of me that causes the guilt and the shame and back to the beautiful memory every 10, 20, 30 seconds. If you do this every day for a little while, every day you just do this process with everything that's bringing up shame and guilt and there'll be a lot in the beginning. Inside of a week, maybe even a month, it might take a little longer, but that's not very long in the scheme of a life, you're gonna see a huge difference. But if you spend your life avoiding the shame and guilt, trying to get validation outside of yourself, trying to go out in the world and prove you're good enough by getting another woman, it's never truly gonna resolve. Because every time you lose that woman, every time she rejects you, every time she just gets mad at you, you're gonna feel like the world is ending. That's the nice guy syndrome. That's the part that's messing you up inside. So I want to encourage you to take a deeper look at this, to begin this process today of tracking all the places you get reactive and apologize out of guilt or out of shame and start to notice those and bring those memories up and face those a little bit at a time and then let it go. This is almost a meditative process, learning to feel your heart in relationship to the shame and then feel your heart in relationship to something that, that nurtures you, that heals you and go back and forth gently almost meditatively until your heart starts to relax a little bit more and a little bit more. And it will, with time, you will get more comfortable looking at those images, learning to laugh at those images, learning to open your heart in the midst of rejection and laugh at it, realizing that the polarity to rejection is acceptance and love. Realizing that if you are super comfortable with rejection, you're super comfortable with doing things wrong, you can keep your heart open in the midst of that, making a mistake, then the opposite is going to start to chase you success acceptance and love too you make a mistake you laugh at it and the person likes you more because let's say you handled her rejection in the sales call you handled uh, their rejection you didn't take it personal matter of fact you pulled out a great salesman pulls out the objections gets them all out says let's talk about it. let's look at why you think this isn't the right product for you maybe it's not maybe it is i'm not afraid of it are you and, and helps you to go through it and process it and on the other side you love him more for it well it's the same thing with a beautiful woman the best with women the men that are the best with women the best with business the best with sales are great with rejection they don't feel guilty in the face of rejection they don't feel ashamed like they did something bad they grow and they learn from it so i'm going to invite you into this practice i think it's a powerful practice for growth and uh, I want to also invite you to watch my previous video on destroying the nice guy. It goes deeper into these nice guy principles, the top three principles that hold nice guys back. And uh, there's even a video before that that's really powerful on the nice guy. And if you really get these videos down, you can start breaking up your nice guy syndrome. You can start breaking up your toxic shame. You can start breaking up your guilt and you can start becoming the most confident, powerful, courageous version of yourself, which is what I'm going to invite you into. So with that said, hopefully you love this video. Um, make sure to check out truecourage.io 
to learn more about developing powerful courage in uh, trainings and seminars and workshops. And if you want some of our dating products, go to thefearlessman.com and check out our dating products. Our revealing and releasing product it will be really powerful. It's an online product you can use to help get through deeper and deeper levels of uh, guilt and shame. Now, with that said, make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe to the video, um, uh, make sure to hit that bell notification and make sure to put a comment in. I love those comments. I created this video based on the comments and based on the comments from the last video. And I'm always looking through them to make sure I'm bringing you the most powerful content ever that helps you develop your courage. And remember, only the courageous really live. See you in the next video.